Reptiles have evolved innate and precocious, meaning that from birth they are gifted with able bodies and all the behaviours and thinking they will need to survive life in the wild. Their needs, wants, strategies and fears are inherited for millions of years of natural programming. And unlike humans or dogs, which have special traits that make them highly adaptable to new situations, reptiles are hardwired to nature. Whether wild caught or captive bred, they need to be wild. The stress of an unnatural life in captivity causes a raft of behavioural problems, and almost all reptiles show these. Just one stress-related behaviour is called ITB, interaction with transparent boundaries. To animal dealers, pet keepers and even many veterinarians, a reptile seen clamouring at the glass, like these, attracts almost no attention. To a behavioural expert, however, ITB is an important sign of stress. Scientific assessment and even common sense says the animal feels trapped and wants out. A human, dog or cat, with their adaptable nature, quickly learn that glass, even though it is invisible, is a hard barrier. Reptiles, however, are pre-programmed for life in nature where there are no impassable transparent boundaries. To reptiles, transparent walls are non-existent forces of confusion and frustration and a self-feeding stressor. Like other captivity stress behaviours, ITB causes physical problems too, such as damaged claws and friction lesions as seen on these lizards. Two behavioural strategies that reptiles and other animals employ to avoid threats and environmental stresses such as outside disturbances or inside light are escape and hide. Escape isn't working. And the inability to avoid unwanted light or a photo-invasive environment as it is sometimes called stresses animals at a time when they seek seclusion. And how does one hide in a thin layer of substrate? Of course, it's not so easy to flog an animal that the prospective customer cannot see. And for nocturnal reptiles, like these lizards, constant and unavoidable light adds to their already multiple stress burden. Few people truly understand the importance of temperature in reptile life. Mammals, including humans, maintain their body temperatures physiologically, from the stability of daily life to the high fevers of illness. Reptiles, though, must manage their body temperatures behaviorally by seeking warmer or cooler areas of the environment. Despite the term cold-blooded, reptiles need to be warm in order to operate at their physiological and behavioral optimums. Like us, when reptiles face challenges such as stress or infection, they too may need to raise their temperature to help. So the physiological fever of mammals, for example, is replaced with behavioural fever in reptiles. Cramped and unnatural surroundings, handling and manipulation, behavioural restrictions, invasive light and noise and perceived predatory threats, among others, may all trigger a necessary fever response in animals under market conditions. But without the essential facilities to voluntarily raise their body temperatures, the reptiles at Terroristica are denied important natural defences, with possible medium and long-term consequences for health and welfare. So many things, including immunity, metabolism and activity, are dependent on the right temperature at the right time. Emotional fever, digestion and physical reactions are all governed by how warm or cool a reptile is. At the market, some reptiles had individual heat sources with constant temperatures. But contrary to the beliefs of many who keep these animals, setting a constant temperature is actually a bad idea, as reptiles need both general and subtle temperatures that only they can determine according to their needs at a given time. The market itself had a background temperature of 24 to 30 degrees Celsius, 
an almost one size temperature that wouldn't fit all. The important naturalistic thermal ranges that reptiles require to remain healthy are impossible to achieve in conditions like these. And then there are the animals in the boxes on the much cooler floor, waiting to restock the stools. For them, there is no standard of warmth at all. And outside in the car park, things are not much better. There are only a few biologists in the world with a deep grasp of reptilian behavioral and psychological needs, and who have the ability to interpret complex abnormalities and stress. No surprise then, that animal dealers and pet keepers alike are almost clueless. Most reptiles are anatomically mute, so there are no pitiful squawks, whines or cries to give away their misery. And because they lack the facial muscles to allow them expression, the very feature that humans so readily use to communicate and understand pain, joy, fear, stress and suffering, their state of mind, almost without exception, goes unnoticed. Stocking and displaying, often precariously, sensitive wild animals as if they are products at a sandwich bar adds to the apparent disregard for the confused and fearful life forms contained within. Some may argue that these conditions are merely temporary. It's a poor excuse, and for many animals, this is almost their entire life, being driven from venue to venue until they are sold or dead. The enthusiastic and the curious head back, laden with lives. As buyers will later confirm, not all animals survived this journey, dying of stress and illness. It's a difficult death, unwell, alone, and a long way from home. An estimated 90% of wild-caught reptiles die in their first year of captivity because of physical trauma prior to purchase or because their owners cannot meet their complex dietary and habitat needs. Pet markets, like Terroristica, have been banned in the UK because of inherent animal welfare problems. And although still occurring in the United States, Authorities there are closing the net. Countless wild animals have already experienced the Terroristica. And for them it is too late. As for the future, a ban on this and other exotic animal markets cannot come too early. Pre-packed pets whose fates are well and truly sealed. It's all a far cry from nature. And as we've learned, reptiles can offer no cries of their own. So we have to do it for them. Between the Animal Protection Agency and International Animal Rescue, we take the fight for animal protection from remote tropical rivers and forests to the high street pet store and to the very top of government. We take it on Head on. APA and IAR exist because wild animals need us on their side, and we need you on ours. Please visit our websites and show your support by making a donation today.